And the embarrassment was the least of it, of what he was avoiding, yeah. as far as social sanction or, or what he perceived to be a social problem, which was being right. seen as being rich, maybe being partitioned or whatever. Yeah, and it's almost like uh, <clears throat> the slippers themselves end up being the cause of him being dragged into society because he's not interacting with people. And the only time in the story that there is an interaction is as a because of the slippers. So it's almost like he's just refusing to interact and fate keeps pulling him into society. You need to interact, you know, you need to share things with people. He bonded to his slippers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they were worn out. <laughs> and they kept coming back. <laughs> did you uh did you have uh, a comment? No. Okay. No. I thought she did. It's interesting because uh, I was in a uh, conversation the other night with the Vedic astrologer, Jeffrey Armstrong, and he was describing the uh, Vedic interpretation of a transit of Saturn over the moon, and I, I immediately thought of the story when he described it. He said um, um, something to the effect that the moon in the Hindu system is the most important part of the chart. It uh, apparently embodies the karmic aspects of the individual, and he says uh, when Saturn transits over the moon, it brings up all the karma and everything that has been has not been dealt with uh, will be dealt with during that period. And he said uh, the classic phrase they say uh, is that uh, if you're a king, you'll be made a beggar. If you're a beggar, you might be made a king. And as soon as he said that, I thought, you know, I have to tell you this story. <laughs> and I told him the story, and he said, yeah, bang, that's that's a, it's amazing. It's well, I've got my I got Saturn coming up on my moon. Yeah, I've got it sextile right now. Oh, in a, in a waning or a waxing? Has it, uh, has it gotten to it yet, or has it passed it's, over? It's it's um. It's going back and forth oh. with, within like two degrees. Of the sextile? Yeah, on so the sextile. Is it, is it's Saturn transiting. So where's your moon? Moon is um, in Cancer. It's conjunct the ascendant. Okay. So, and Saturn is in Aries. So it's a, it's a sextile. 60, 60 degrees. Okay. What happens with uh, Saturn and the moon? That's not going to be very similar to the work of retrograde because by progression, and um, one astrologer named it Saturn is jogging my moon. <laughs> I think that's pretty accurate. <laughs> 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 Just bend over. Because the progressive, <laughs> progressive moon and Saturn have a 28 year cycle. So if Saturn catches up with, with the, and Saturn's just a little bit faster. So if Saturn catches up with your pro progressive moon, it's like, you know, it's it does this and then it goes back, but the moon moves forward slowly, you know, the same amount, but Saturn keeps coming up, oh, crossing great. over, it's backing up, yeah. and then it keeps going, and then it does this, and it does about five times <laughs> before it separates. I get it! <laughs> I looked up uh, to see what Rob Hand had to say just about the Saturn moon transit, and he said the thing about the loneliness tends to come in. You may feel lonely and isolated and cut off from people, you may have uh, financial problems. And uh, so it was even a fit in the Western tradition. So wow. it's amazing. Well, the same things happen in Eastern and Western. It's just that there are different signs. You know, but the planets still move forward and backwards. Right, they still got the same. Yeah. It's just that they interpret it you know, in a different way. Than the <laughs> Any more uh, comments? Shall we move on to the next story? The next one's a Celtic story, um, and it concerns this little uh, folk tale about uh, Khan Ada, who is actually whose name is a combination of his two parents' names, King Khan and Queen Ada. And uh, their reign was apparently a beneficent one, uh, very fruitful. Uh, the crops did well, uh, classical uh, golden age motif. And um, it was prophesied that the child would be born bearing the characteristics of both parents, so they named him uh, Khan Ada as a combination of the two names. Well, um, his call to adventure begins when his mother dies as he's moving into adolescence. And uh, the father then remarries, and he marries a, uh, the classical wicked stepmother. And she doesn't want Khan Ada around because she has kids of her own, and she doesn't want him inheriting the throne, so she wants to get rid of him. So she goes to the uh, local wicked witch and says, how can I bring this about? And the witch says, send him to the fairy realm and make him get from the fairy king these three golden apples and his steed, which is a black stallion, and his sacred dog. And the way in which you will do this, she says, is here's this magical chessboard, and its properties are such that the owner will always win the first game. Play a game with him, win the first game, and then put a geist on him. 
and the geis is this Celtic putting a spell on someone. If someone puts a geis on you, you have to do uh, what it is that they have uh, conjured you forth to do. So she plays uh, the game with him, puts a geis on him, but uh, as some of you may have learned uh, in the casinos, uh, a win uh, is very hard to walk away from. So she challenges him to another game and she loses the second one. And uh, he puts a geis on her and he says, during the time period that I'm gone, which turns out to be a year and a day, um, you will stay immobile in this tower and you will go nowhere and do nothing. So he goes, he doesn't know where to go or what to do. So he goes to the sort of town druid and he says, what should I do? And the druid says, there's a bird with a human head and uh, it's oracular. It has all this knowledge of past, present, and future. And what you need to do is take this uh, shaggy, broken down steed, climb on it, and uh, take this little stone and offer the stone to the bird and the bird will prophesy for you what you need to do. So he gets on the horse, which is a talking horse, and uh, he lets the reins lie slack on the horse's neck and the horse automatically guides him, knows exactly where to take him, takes him to the bird with the human head. And this thing perches up on this uh, uh, perch and uh, he offers the stone to it and it says look under the stone and you'll find there an iron ball and a cup. So Kainita gets off the horse and he lifts up the stone and there's the iron ball and the cup and the bird says cast the iron ball out before your horse and the horse will follow it and it will take you to the fairy kingdom which is where you need to go. So he does this and uh, the horse is automatically following this iron ball that goes rolling along over hill and dale and uh, they come to a lake and the ball rolls into the lake and they stop before it and Kaneda asks the horse, he says, what do we do now? And the horse says, reach into my ear and pull out um, this tube that's an elixir, it's called All Heal, and you will find also this basket. Pull both of those objects out, you'll need them and hang on. So they walk into the lake and the horse carries them along on the bottom, the ball's rolling along on the bottom of the lake and the horse uh, carries Kaneda along and they come to these three sea serpents and the horse says, now reach into the basket. There you'll find three pieces of meat and throw to each one of the serpents a piece of meat. But make sure you do it correctly uh, or we'll be in trouble. So he does this and uh, faultlessly uh, gives the serpents their uh, venison. And then uh, the horse carries them up out of the water. And uh, the horse says, uh, how are you doing? He says, oh, that was effortless. It was fine. And he says, good, because uh, <clears throat> you'll need to hang on for this next one. And they come across this huge mountain of fire. And the horse says, hang on and jumps over it like an arrow and uh, comes out the other side, you know, like a Hollywood movie, comes crashing out, and uh, the horse says, how'd you do on that one? And he says, well, fine, except for these third degree burns. And uh, he says, well, that's what you uh, need the elixir for, so rub some of that on there and you'll be fine. So he opens up the tube of the elixir and rubs it. He's fine. And then they go along for a little while, and they, in the distance they see the shimmering kingdom of the fairies, and it has these huge insurmountable walls, and it's guarded by these two pillars of fire. And the horse says, now comes the tough part. What you're going to have to do is reach into my other ear, and in there you'll find a sacred knife. Hold the knife out, and you will cut my throat with it. You will flay the skin off my body, and you will put the horse's skin over your body, and you will pass unnoticed through the gate. Once you're inside the gate, you can come and go as you will. But if you would just please do me the favor of, once you get in, come back out and sprinkle some of the elixir on my corpse so that the birds will stay away from it. He says, uh, he balks at it and says, but you've been my faithful, trusty companion. I can't just do away with you. And the horse says, don't worry about it. Trust me. Uh, and uh, he says, well, what if I refuse to comply? And the horse said, the adventure will end here. You have to do this. So he takes the knife out and uh, he puts it uh, to the horse's throat and it sort of cuts it for him, does the job for him, and he flays the skin, uh, he cries a little bit about it, puts the skin on, goes into the fairy kingdom, but he's so overcome by grief at the loss of his friend that he, the marvels of the fairy world don't interest him at all. And he comes back out and he sprinkles the elixir on the horse's remains, and then suddenly up springs this beautiful young prince, and the prince says, ah, thank you very much. I have been waiting for you to do that for a very long time. You see, I am the brother of the fairy king, and the wicked witch who gave your mother the chessboard is our sister. And the archdruid who gave you the horse was actually uh, the wicked magician who put a geis on me and transformed me into this stallion. And we had been waiting for a hero to come and uh, remove the spell. And uh, it required this elixir. Thank you, and I'm very grateful to you. Now we'll, the rest of it will be cake, and we'll just go right into the fairy kingdom. And uh, my king, the brother, will be happy to give you the trinkets that you need. 
So he, they go into the Fairy Kingdom, and uh, he stays the rest of his time there. It's, you know, it's a kind of hotel resort thing. And um, they give him the three uh, golden apples, and the stallion, and the horse. And um, on the last day of the 365 plus one, uh, he's on his way back. And the queen is in the tower, and she sees him coming from the distance. And her geist is removed, so she jumps.